All right, let's talk about predicting performance. That's a good thing to be able to do uh, from a coach perspective or from an athlete perspective. It's nice to evaluate your training program based upon some sub um, distance events. So let's say you want to train for a marathon. At some point, you might want to evaluate if you're on target for achieving your time that you want to, uh, to hit for the marathon. And you could do some type of event that's not a marathon uh, to predict that performance. So maybe a 5K or a 10K or uh, some type of workout. Uh, and then that would tell you whether or not you're on track for, um, uh, for your, your goal time. It, the material covered in this chapter is a little bit, well, it is dated. There's some uh, technology out now that uh, can be used to better uh, identify uh, performance. Uh, but everything is based on the same principles. And so I'm going to go through the material in this um, chapter, but realize that you might want to look at devices like a Garmin Connect or Strava type program where uh, training peaks that you can start to try to predict your performance based upon some newer uh, technology. But the foundation of, of tho all those predictions are in essence the same. So uh, in chapter two, uh, Noakes goes through prediction tables primarily. And the prediction tables are all based upon past performances. And uh, different authors have uh, collected a lot of different data from uh, performances of different athletes and then aggregated those data and created different uh, tables predicting performance. And they, they you know, vary a bit based on different assumptions the authors uh, make based upon the type of athlete uh, that they're looking at. And in some sense, they're, they're helpful and accurate and others, they may be off target a little bit. Uh, knowledge of VO2 max and running economy is important in terms of uh, coming up with a good prediction of performance and uh, really the percent VO2 that could be sustained ends up being an important uh, parameter. When we're uh, dealing more with cycling, we'll talk about eventually about the term called functional threshold power. That's the same concept as uh, uh, trying to determine what is the threshold power that can be sustained uh, during biking for an hour. And then uh, your training program and your performance are, are based upon that number uh, specifically. The interesting thing is a lot of these prediction tables do not account for environmental conditions, grade, wind, or temperature, or even differences in subjects. So one runner versus another runner. Now there are some software packages out there that do account for environmental conditions. Uh, one that um, uh, that that is I, I've gone through in the in the past, and you may see some of this in in this class is Best Bike Splits. That actually does use historical environmental data for different races, wind direction, temperature, humidity, things like that, and they build those. Uh, environmental conditions into the prediction model for predicting how fast your bike split may be in uh, an Ironman or uh, bike race. So really neat, sophisticated uh, algorithms. So I'm going to go through these tables. Uh, I don't use these. I'll use uh, more the, um, the software that's out there, but the concepts are, are, uh, are the same. So with Davies Thompson, uh, you need to know your VO2 max and the percent of VO2 max that can be sustained for a period of time. That's analogous to the functional threshold power that I mentioned, uh, how long uh, you can, or what pace you can sustain for an hour, for example, um, something along that line. So here's an example, VO2 max, 60 mLs per kg per minute. If you can sustain 50% of that, then you can calculate your running speed. And off of that, you can, uh, you, you can identify, uh, in this example, you can sustain 9.5 kilometers per hour. And so then you build your race pace around that. Now, clearly that sustained percentage will vary based upon distances. And this is uh, a, a figure illustrating that. On the y-axis is percent oxygen consumption that can be sustained. And on the x-axis is time. So uh, standard marathon, 85% of 
of VO2 max may be able to be sustained by uh, most athletes. Comrades Marathon, it, that's a double marathon in uh, South Africa. So that you do uh, 52.8 miles uh, for that. And then these are you know, other uh, ultra runs all the way up to even 24 hour uh, runs. And you, to run 24 hours, you probably only sustain about 45% VO2 max. So you can build prediction tables around this if you know VO2 max. Now I've already said in other videos, VO2 max alone is not a great predictor of, um, of performance. But here's, some, uh, here's a prediction table based upon this type of concept. Uh, if you know your VO2 max is 68.2, then you can uh, predict uh, different form performances off of that. So if we look at a 17 minute 5K, that would translate to a, a um, 34 uh, 10K if you were able to sustain that same pace, but you're not able to. So the 34 43 accounts for that. 21 kilometers is a half marathon and so forth. Uh, this is just another uh, table, the assumption uh, is that the percent VO2 max that can be sustained falls uh, with running time, not only uh, 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 pace. And so here is just another table. So now you've got 17 minute 5K, but now this is gonna be a little slower based upon this model, 3517. So the previous one was 3443, and this one's 3517. So which one's correct? Well, again, this is an individual. It's a, it, they're different based upon how the, the models are um, accounting for changes in running economy, submax VO2, uh, that, can, that can be sustained for different um, speeds or different times. Uh, this is just another prediction table where they try to work in some type of quality of, uh, of run and they rate the, uh, the performance, that's table 2.7. I didn't put it in here because it's just another iteration of uh, the concept of, of, um, of trying to sustain a certain amount of VO2 uh, over a time or a distance. And sprinters may be different than uh, distance runners in terms of, of what can be sustained. This is another um, approach, it's a little different though. Uh, it's a nomogram, so you have to know two race times. So now they're getting away from using physiology, but using actual performances to predict uh, uh, future performances. And so what you do is you take this nomogram, and I, I, this is sort of a fun one to do. You connect two race times that you have, estimate uh, VO2 max, estimate, you know, excuse me, you can use that to estimate VO2 max estimate other times of other races, and then ultimately even determine quality of performance on this. So here's the nomogram, this is in the textbook. So let's say I can run a 17 minute 5K and a 37 minute 10K. I just circle those two numbers and then I, collect, I connect them with a straight line. And then that tells me what I can do for a 20K hour and 20, that's almost a half marathon. Half marathon is 21 kilometers. Or of a marathon, which is 42 kilometers, 42.2. Uh, and that looks like, based upon these two times, I'd almost be able to, I'd be just under a three hour, 10 minute marathon. And it would tell me that my VO2 max would probably be uh, about 68 mLs per kg per minute. And it can, predict other times as well. So it's sort of a fun uh, sort of graph to go through if you know some your race performances. And, uh, and knowing race performances is a good predictor of future performances. And this, is, this green line just represents level of fatigability of an athlete. So for example, if, um, we, if the race performance at the 5K was 17, and then for a um, 10K, almost double that, that would represent a, um, the ability to sustain the same pace over a longer distance. And so this decrement here is indicating that you can't sustain that same pace for a 5K uh, as a 10K. Or maybe you can, and that just represents your, your level of fatigability across different races. 
A value closer to 100 would mean more fatigue resistant. All right. But as I mentioned in the beginning, there's some neat wearable technology out there that takes advantage of um, having uh, more data collected uh, over time. And you can use uh, your wearable technology for your daily training activities. And then the data are uploaded to a, uh, uh, a software program. And then the software program has some algorithms that can be used to predict uh, performance and then even identify a training program that uh, might be helpful to improve performances in certain areas. So these, these algorithms are getting quite sophisticated and even using things like machine learning, which is an iterative process uh, to identify the best training program for a particular athlete. So this is just using, in this case, Garmin Connect, and you wear a GPS monitor, you wear a heart rate monitor, uh, and those data are uploaded and stored, and then uh, it, they, uh, the software uses um, an algorithm to predict VO2 max. Is it, these are not actual VO2 max data points. So for this athlete, uh, predicting VO2 max based upon training and race performances. Same concept as the table saw, just in digital format. And then there's some other run metrics in this example uh, of this software. You can have all these different metrics term, in terms of quantifying running style, running performance, and you can look at these and, and try to adjust training uh, based on those. And you can look at what happens over different periods of time from 12 months, six months, four weeks, prior or even seven days the week uh, of the training. And you can compare yourself to other people who upload data. I don't know if that's good or not, but uh, you ride faster than 98% of other users. Uh, you run farther than 25% other users, uh, you know, whatever. Sometimes that's motivating uh, to individuals. You can also um, tailor a training program or use these devices to create a training program. I'm not selling any of this, but it is pretty neat to see these uh, types of, of, uh, of, uh, of things develop in the wearable technology world. Uh, and there's all different, uh, you can actually, uh, in some programs, you can set a target goal and then based upon the training that you're doing, uh, the software will build a training program uh, specific to trying to achieve that target goal for you. And so these are 5K training programs, 10K, half marathon, marathon training programs. Uh, I put this in here. This is just good to know. ACSM is our main organization that we, uh, a lot of us are, are part of, American College of Sports Medicine. And this is just good to have in your back pocket in terms of predicting VO2 based upon speed and grade. That's just an easy formula. This is built on um, uh, lots of data from lots of uh, subjects being collected. And if you know the grade and if you know the speed that you want to sustain for a race, you can predict the VO2 that you would need to, in order to achieve that, that uh, speed for that grade. And yeah, so you can use that to predict a given speed. And this is just an example. VO2, you can go the other way too. If you if you know what VO2 you can sustain, you can work backwards and, and uh, calculate that speed. So for uh, a 30 mLs per kg per minute, uh, you can uh, plug the numbers in and you can identify that your speed would be about five miles per hour to sustain that, that VO2. Uh, this is just looking at the math of the equation. This is VO2 and mLs per kg per minute, speed on the uh, x-axis, and then these are just different elevations. And you can see if you're running uphill, the amount of oxygen required and the rate of oxygen consumed is greater for uh, running uphill versus running on level or even versus running downhill. And that difference is going to get bigger as uh, as we try to run faster up a, a certain hill. All right, summary of prediction. Um, field to max by itself is not a great predictor of internal performance. Uh, 
this might be because VO two max is a result of performance versus a, a detriment of performance. That is, maybe VO two max is simply because I can run a certain speed. That's going to be my VO two max. And if we look at ACSM equation, that's what it tells you. It, uh, ACSM equation does not tell you that you reach the end of your your graded exercise test. But if you put in the last speed that you um, achieved, it will be um, it will go back and predict VO two max. In reality, past performances are the best predictor of endurance performance. So that nomogram is uh, pretty interesting. And even using just a 10K time, uh, if you use that, that's probably a better predictor of uh, endurance performance for a marathon than even um, uh, some of the tables that are, are built out. And I think that's it. Okay, so uh, prediction, it, it, it's great to have this in your back pocket if you're trying to evaluate yourself in terms of your progress in your training program or if you're working with someone as a coach to be able to do some testing to be able to uh, identify whether or not the athlete is on target for reaching their, uh, their goal. Okay, thank you.